Many times in my childhood as we travel so far by nightfall, how weary I grow. Father's arms would slip around me so gently he'd say, my child, we're going home. Going home, I'm going home. There's nothing to hold me here. Well, I've caught a glimpse of that head land. Praise God, I'm going home. Now the twilight is fading and the day soon shall end. I get homesick, the farther I roam. But my father has led me each step of the way, and now we're going home. Going home, I'm going home. There's nothing to I'm going home. Oh, my heart gets so heavy, and I'm longing to see all my loved ones and friends I have known. Every step draws me nearer to that land of my dreams praise God I'm going home going home I'm going home there's nothing to hold me here well I've caught a glimpse of that heavenly land. Praise God, I'm going home. Going home, I'm going home. There's nothing to hold. of that heavenly land. Praise God, I'm going home. Amen. Amen. I'd say it's been a since you heard this request but my spirit is tired and i need rest i want to hear from heaven a clear word from god a sermon of conviction straight from the heart i've been hearing other preachers Say I don't have to change The most eloquent of speakers Tell me I'm okay But it hasn't eased my conscience And I know it's not the truth 
So when you stand before us, can I count on you? Oh, preacher, you say you want to be my friend. Don't be afraid to call my sin what it is. And preacher, Preacher, tell me like it is. So open up the word and let the spirit lead. Preach until I've heard God speak to me. Don't worry about my feelings. Don't worry about my shame. Just preach the cross of Jesus and that I'm to blame. Oh, preacher, you say you want to be my friend. Don't be afraid to call my sin what it is. And preacher, That was a powerful song, amen? amen? Preacher, tell me like it is. Don't tell me like I wish it was. Tell me like it is. You know, we need some more preachers to tell it like it is, amen? amen. And uh, we live in a country with a lot of preachers, and uh, many of them tell, tell us like it we want it to be. But praise God, we have a preacher, and uh, thank God for preachers that uh, tell it like it is, Amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, if you would, turn to the book of Romans tonight, the book of Romans. I've titled the message tonight, Against All Odds. Against All Odds. Against All Odds. You know, I think about that, you know, many oftentimes we preach messages that are, you know, this is the way the Bible says this is ideal situation. Um, you know, we, we've come through Mother's Day and Father's Day, and, and obviously we, we talk many often how the home should be. And, you know, sometimes, though, in, in life, we don't necessarily have it like we would like to have it, if you will. And there are circumstances, uh, obviously we can't change who we are. Uh, we are who we are. I mean, this condition we're in, uh, a lot of times, uh, and, 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 and I'm not going to go into great detail to get off track of, of certain things, but, you know, folks, a lot of times we, we face things, uh, and, and, and unfortunately, sometimes we have no control over those situations. Uh, it could be a result of, of something, choices we've made in the past or whatnot, 
but we are what we are. We are where we are in life, if you will, and, and, and we're all against something, if you will. We're, we're battling uh, many trials, many tribulations. If we're a child of God, we've been a child of God long. Either one, we're going through a trial, or we have been through a trial, or we will go through a trial. Those, those are the, really the three options. I mean, really, there's no two ways about it. This side of heaven, the uh, world is not perfect. Uh, we live in a sinful world. Uh, we see all kinds of problems going on around us. There's so much hate. There's so much, I mean, and man, I could just go on and on. I could just preach a message just about what's going on in America. But we're against odds. You know, if we're a child of God, we're, we're, an, we're, we're odd. Bible says we're a peculiar people. You know, we're, we're not to be of the world. We're in the world, but we're not to be of the world. And, uh, you know, we are against all odds in being a child of God even. You know, we're, we're not popular. Uh, the devil makes us unpopular. He, he sees to it that, that you and I are, are uh, really the, the uh, I guess, the, the point of every joke. You know, we, we get made fun of. We, we are uh, those that uh, people, you know, talk about and and uh, so forth, but but against all odds, being the underdog, if you will, the one that uh, obviously is not the most popular, the one that our situation obviously is is not the most ideal, uh, you know. Again, and and there's some challenges that we have in life, and how do we how do we face those? How do we deal with those situations? How do we overcome the the circumstance or the condition that we feel, the challenge that that that's created because of of one particular uh, event or, or something that's going on, something that is challenging our life. Johnny Fulton was run over by a car at the age of three. He suffered crushed hips, broken ribs, a fractured skull, a compound fracture in his legs. It did not look as if he would live. But he would not give up. In fact, he later ran the half mile in less than two minutes. Walt Davis was totally paralyzed by polio when he was nine years old, but he did not give up. He became the Olympic high jump champion in 1952. Shelley Mann was paralyzed by polio when she was five years old, but she would not give up. She eventually claimed eight different swimming records to the U.S. and won a gold medal at the 1956 Olympics in Melbourne, Australia. In 1938, Carol Takacs, a member of Hungary's world champion pistol shooting team and sergeant in the army, lost his right hand when a grenade he was holding exploded. But Patax did not give up. He learned to shoot left-handed and won gold medals in the 1948 and 1952 Olympics. Lou Gehrig was such a clumsy ball player that the boys in his neighborhood would not let him play on their team. But he was committed. He did not give up. Eventually, his name was entered in the Baseball's Hall of Fame. Woodrow Wilson could not read until he was 10 years old, but he was a committed person. He became the 28th president of the United States. At the age of seven, he had to go to work to help his, support his family. At nine, his mother died. At 22, he lost his job as a store clerk. At 23, he went into debt and became a partner in a small store. At 26, his partner died, leaving him a huge debt. By the age of 35, he had been defeated twice when running for a seat in Congress. At the age of 37, he won the election. At 39, he lost his re-election bid. At 41, his four-year-old son died. At 42, he was rejected for a land officer role. At 45, he ran for the Senate and lost. At 47, he was defeated for the nomination for vice president. At 49, he ran for Senate again and lost again. At the age of 51, he was elected president of the United States. During his second term of office, he was assassinated, but his name lives as one of the greatest U.S. presidents, Abraham Lincoln. All these men and, and women, these individuals that faced amazing odds, amazing situations in their life that these circumstances would normally, uh, you know, obviously defeat that person. They would just sit down and, and just want to give up. But child of God, we serve a, an amazing God. Amen. You know, you and I can't do anything on our own. But you know, with God, all things are possible. The Bible talks about, you know, and with God, if God is in our life and he's prevalent in our lives, there's nothing that, that we in our lives cannot overcome with our Savior and our relationship with our Savior. And again, there's people here tonight, I believe, that are going against the odds, that are really struggling with something in their lives. They, they, and and, and I'm, I'm going to touch a little bit on, on many different areas, 
but uh, they're struggling and, and they're fighting and, and, and really we're all fighting the devil, but really those that are, that, are, that are unpopular, if you will, the ones that don't have that ideal situation or the ones that are the underdog, the ones that, that obviously are, uh, society tells you you're not going to amount to anything, you're not going to be anything or you can't do this. You know, I, I, that's why I, I really don't like that word. My kids say I can't do that. I, I, I just, as a, as, a, as a kid, I was, I would get in trouble over that. My daddy said can't, never did anything. You know, sometimes whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. In our mind, we, if we've already determined that we can't do it, then we might not want to even try. But in our mind, it don't matter, you know, if we say we can do it with God's help, you know, we can overcome some amazing things. But against all odds, here in Romans, we're in chapter 4 here this evening in, in Romans. Romans chapter 4. And I want us to see... One verse here, I'm going to read a few verses, but I want us to see one verse and one thought here that's going to drive the theme or the thought of the, the message, if you will. Uh, we're going to read Romans chapter 4, and we're going to read the first five verses, and then we'll skip on down. Romans chapter 4, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that it justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now look down in verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. Lord, a privilege again that we can, Lord, just come in the doors of this church. And Lord, I thank you for a church. Uh, that's open on Sunday night. I thank you for our pastor. I thank you for the people here. Lord, it's so good to see uh, ones we haven't seen for a bit. And Lord, I know understanding the circumstances and Lord, all around us, Lord, I, I praise you for those that have been faithful uh, listening in on live streaming. And, and Lord, the ones that are faithful here tonight, Lord, I, I pray that you just continue to be with the ones that Lord, that would have loved to have been here tonight, Lord, that you'd strengthen them and encourage them, Lord. And Lord, the ones that are here tonight, Lord, is, there's many, I'm sure, battling the odds, going against the odds, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd help and touch them. And Lord, that the Holy Spirit would speak to them in their heart. And Lord, that they'd realize that the strength not lies, lies not within themselves, but within you. And, Lord, we just praise you. Help, Lord, speak through me. Lord, help me to preach with passion. Tonight, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight here, I want to bring a message about fighting against the odds, going against all odds, if you will. Here in these verses we just read, talked about a man by the name of Abraham. Abraham, obviously, as we know, was, was a man of God. Uh, we know he was... Uh, chosen by God to do some great and amazing things. We know Abraham was not perfect. He made some mistakes. And, uh, you know, he got ahead of God in, in certain circumstances. And, but we know that God had promised Abraham to be father of, of, a, of a, an amazing nation. And praise God, we are the descendants of Abraham. Amen. And, uh, but uh, Father Abraham had many sons, you know. And, uh, you know, I get often called Abraham at work. But some people say, you remind me of Abraham. And, but but uh, anyway, the, um, anyway, not to get off track there, but, but fighting against the odds. And Abraham was one that, that, that fought against the odds, if you will. Looking in verse 18, it says, Who against hope believed in hope? Who against hope believed in hope? Uh, there was a commentary, and, and I really enjoy Matthew Henry's commentary. His English is a little bit, uh, it's, it's old, it's written in the 1800s. But he said, here was the comment on this particular portion of this verse, verse is who, who against hope believed in hope. It says, there was a hope against him, a natural hope. All the arguments of sense and reason and experience, which in such cases usually begat and support hope, were against him. No second causes smiled upon him, nor in the least favored his hope. 
But against all those inducements to the contrary, he believed, for he had a hope for him. He believed in hope, which arose, as his faith did, from the consideration of God's all-sufficiency, that he might become the father of many nations. Therefore God, by his almighty grace, enabled him thus to believe against hope, that he might pass for a pattern of great and strong faith to all generations. It was fit that he who was to be the father of the faithful should have something more than ordinary in his faith, that in him faith should be set in its highest elevation, and so the endeavors of all succeeding believers be directed, raised, and quickened. Who against hope believed in hope. You know, praise God, tonight we have hope in God. You know, we serve a God, a God of hope. You know, I was, the other morning I, I got, uh, I, many of you probably do the same thing. You got the daily verse that pops up on your phone. If you got one of them smartphones and you subscribe to some sort of uh, Bible on, 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 on your phone and whatnot, I, it'll pop up. I have a couple of them. And then one of those verses was Romans fifteen thirteen says, Now the God of hope, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost the God of hope. Going against the odds. Tonight I've got six points very quickly about going against the odds. First of all, I find the situation. The situation that we have in our life. Each and every one of us here tonight has, a, has had a situation, is uh, having a situation, or will have a situation in your life where we will be battling the odds. We'll be going against the odds of, uh, of, of what in our minds seems impossible seems unreasonable seems like it just can't be done the odds are stacked up against us if you will you know you know these odds these challenges in life uh these issues the problems we face you know really uh they're they're in our mind they're 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 bigger than than what we can handle i mean really they're they're discouraging and they're they're huge problems and many things happen and and they're very discouraging many years ago when i early in my career i used to be responsible for for repairing tools that are our our, our company and so anyway long story short I, there was a company in indiana that we would use to repair these tools if something major would happen and, and i would always call this call this gentleman and i said roger i said you know i said we got a problem and he would he stopped me and the first time he, he said you know jason you don't have a problem he said you got an opportunity Amen. every time I, I would say you know roger we got a problem finally i said roger we got an opportunity because that's the mentality you know we, we think we see problems god sees opportunities God sees an opportunity that you and I can, can learn from this situation. We can see this out, and, and God says, you know what, uh, he sees it or she sees it as, as a problem. And really, and, and humanly speaking, it is a problem. It's a problem to us. But to God, it's an opportunity. And to us, child of God, it should be an opportunity, an opportunity for us to learn what God is, is trying to tell us, what God is trying to, to teach us. And what God is trying to do in, in our lives, if you will. We want, but we all have situations in our life where we fight against the odds. Maybe God's calling you to do something. God has called you to do something. You're in the process of answering that call. Maybe God has called you to, to do something that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Absolutely just uh, is totally you know, off, off center. And it's like, that just don't make any sense at all, God. Why would you ask me to do something so... I just can't do that. And, and, and we, we discourage ourselves. And in our mind, we, we reason within ourselves it just can't be done. And that's just how we are. We just say, well, that's not something that, that I can overcome. It's not something that, that I'm able to do. And you're right. It's not something you're able to do. But praise God, if he's called you to do it, if he's asked you to do it, he's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the ability. He's going to give you every necessary element that's going to be required in order to make that uh, task or that something uh, possible. But the devil, he, he wants us to focus on the challenge. The devil, he says, yeah, you're right. That, that's, that's way too big for you. That's, that's something that you can't overcome. That's something that, you know, that, that obviously is beyond you know, your, your ability to, to do. And you know, God's way too busy to, 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 to deal with you know, your problem. I mean, he's got all kinds of things. He's got, he's got the America that's in turmoil that he's got to deal with. And he's got all of this problems out here. He's your your problem. I mean, he's just that's what the devil wants us to, to think. 
The devil wants us to think that, you know, we're the least important thing to God. Praise God. If we're a child of God, we're the most important thing to God right now. And it's amazing how he can love and care for each and every one of us all at the same time. Because he's God. That's just the way he is. That's the way he works. And it's amazing. You know, we, we think so finitely, but, but we got to think in terms of God. His is his infinite. He thinks infinitely. The Bible says his ways are much higher than our ways. But, it, but the devil will tell us it can't be done. You know, the odds are against you, and, and, and you, you just no sense in fighting against the odds. Praise God. You know, child of God, with his strength, we can fight against those odds. Maybe you don't have that model home. Maybe there's a situation, and, and folks, I come from a broken home. You know, I, I, I've shared many stories and many times, and, and some of you may have never heard it, but I, my mom and dad divorced when I was four years old. So my mom was a single mother, and uh, so it was, you know, that was, it was rough. You know, it was different. You know, it was, didn't have necessarily the same structure that, you know, that my kids have. And I praise God. And, and you know, that's, that's something that not a lot of family has nowadays. It's, it's a struggle, and, and it really is. And, and I remember the struggles that mom had. And unfortunately, she, she wasn't living for the Lord, but she knew what was important. So she, she had, I mean, she had me in church. My grandmother was sold to it. Uh, she allowed my grandmother to, to be faithful in taking me to church. And I tell you that it was against, I went against the odds. But it was, it was because there was, there was a, a connection there. You know, there was, there was the, the love and the, the, the devotion that my grandmother had spent with me in prayer and, and taking me to church. You know, she took the time. I mean, it's, you know, folks, it's important to have, you know, kids that aren't in that condition. It's important to have those kids in church because you want to fight against the odds. That's the best way to do it. Getting close to the Lord. But nobody has a perfect home. You know, really, they, even a model home, I mean, even if you've got that intact family, it's it's still, I mean, there is no perfect home. I, I mean, if, if, if somebody says we got a perfect home, you better run because that's, that, that's just not possible. People just aren't perfect. We're human, right? I'm grumpy every 10 to 15 years, remember? But the reality of it is we're all human. Maybe we're running from our past. Maybe there's something that we're fighting against, something that happened long ago, something that we've been battling and just haven't been able to let go. And the devil, he reminds us of that past. You know, he's good about that. He's got a good memory. But, you know, he's his strategy. He says, hey, you remember that way back when and that sin that you, even after you, 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 you became a child of God, you remember that thing you got involved in or that, that something that you did or that mistake that you made? And, and, and he gets us to focus on that. And, and, he, and he tells us that we're, we're just not good enough. And we're really, you know, God can't use us because of, of our past. And, and God can't, God, God really, he really doesn't want nothing to do with us because of what we did way back here. This situation in our life, this problem that we had, this, this past that we had, and, and we start to think about it and, it, and it really starts to bother us, and, and it really discourages us, and when we focus on the problem, that, that situation, that past, if you will, then it takes our eyes off of Jesus. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord and the things of God and being faithful to God. Because the devil has us, once we get our eyes off of Jesus, he gets, our, he gets our attention by certain things, and he gets us focusing on the things that we shouldn't focus on. Maybe it's something else. Maybe there's a struggle going against the odds with some sort of physical problem, something that is battling, some health problem that we may have that, that, that Satan is, is really getting us down, and, and he's really, you know, we, we, we live in these mortal bodies. Unfortunately, we're all, we're all going to face problems. And really, as, as time goes by, and I mean, there's so many problems. I mean, really, there's so many battles that we fight physically. Uh, we hear them, and we experience them. Many of you are, are currently going through those physical challenges in life, and it, it's a struggle because we live in this, this, this shell, if you will. It's a, it's a, it's a house of, of, uh, uh, that's going to dilapidate and, and, and just one day it's going to pass away. That's, that's unfortunately the, the, the route that we all are headed in. Nobody has lived forever. Uh, there's one that has overcome death, and that's Jesus Christ. But praise God, one of these days we are going to overcome death. We are going to have a resurrected body. We are going to have a resurrected life. But in this life, we're going to have physical problems. We, we may be battling spiritual problems. 
Maybe we got some spiritual problems going on. Maybe there's a financial problem or there's some other sort of problem, something that we're fighting the odds, if you will. In verses 19 and 20 of Romans, it says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He didn't worry about the odds. He said, God told me that he was going to pray. He promised me a son. He promised me that I was going to be the father of many nations. He promised me that I was going to beat the odds because I'm old and, and because Sarah's old. I mean, we're just well, she's well past age. It's just not, not possible. You know, our situation, this, this problem that we've got, it's just, it's just not possible. It's not possible. It just doesn't make sense. But God says, it's possible. Yeah, and, and, and who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe the devil that says it's, it's not possible? Or are we going to believe God and say, you know what? I'm going to have faith. I'm going to have faith like, like Abraham did. I'm going to have faith that, that, that God is going to allow us to, to overcome this situation and, and help us to fight against this odd, if you will, these odds, if you will. But it requires strong faith. It requires faith there that, like Abraham had, an unwavering faith. So how, how do I get that kind of faith? It's through our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's through our relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's, it's, it's growing with Him in, in prayer and, and in reading His Word and getting close to, to, to our Heavenly Father. It really, that's how it comes. And faith comes, it doesn't come uh, in the mail. It doesn't come in, in a small, nice package or a big package or, or anything. Faith comes through hard work and, 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 and building that relationship with our Savior. A one-legged school teacher from Scotland came to J. Hudson Taylor to offer himself for service in China. With only one leg, he said, why do you think of going on as a missionary? Asked Taylor. He said, I don't see those with two legs going. He didn't let his problem discourage him. You know, he could have said, well, I got one leg, so I'm just, I'm just not fit for, for that work that God called me to do. Or you can say, well, I've, because of my past or because of my situation or because of my physical problem or because of my spiritual problem because of my, my, or because of this or because of that, or, and we can just keep going on and on and on because of this or, or, or whatever, whatever it is, whatever that uh, odd is in your life, those odds are in your life. And, and, and we could say, you know what, we're not going to do that. Or we could say, you know what, it doesn't matter what those disadvantages are. It doesn't matter what the odds. It doesn't matter what my condition or what my state. It doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. It doesn't matter what others tell me to do. God says to do this, and God has called me, and he says go here or do that or, or be faithful here. Then we need to do that. Amen. That's what God is expecting of you and I. You know, Satan wants us to focus on our problem. He wants us to take our eyes off the problem solver. Really, he wants us to, to, to focus on the problem at hand, not the one that can take that problem and, and, and remove it. There was a story I read of, of three little girls and a mother, and uh, the, these, this family was, was, a, was a poor family in, in, uh, in standards of, of that day, and unfortunately they had lost their father he had, to sickness, and, and this, uh, this, this family was, you know, it was a very... Uh, very happy family, even though despite all the circumstances, they had overcome some amazing odds. They were, they were just a very close-knit family, even though it was the three of them and the mother, and, and she cared for them. And, and again, they were, they were poor. They didn't, have, they didn't have a whole lot, but they had each other, and they were happy, and they, they had no idea they were poor. They were just happy, and, 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 and one day the, the, the church is, that they went to, the, the pastor said, I want, you know, some, someone, uh, you know, uh, I have a family in mind. The Lord has laid on my heart, and, and, the, and they're, uh, you know, they're a poor family. And, you know, I'd like for everybody in the church, you know, at the end of summer, I want you everybody to save their money. And, and this was early summer. He said, at the end of summer, I want to take a, a collection. I want to take an offering. And he said, I want to, I want to take and I want to, I want to give it to this poor family, if you will. And so this poor family, this three girls and this mother, they, they, they were determined that they were going to save money. 
even though the money was tight and, and money was hard, so they, they, they raised a garden, and they took those uh, vegetables and things to market, and they sold them, and, and they made, uh, uh, you know, different pies and things like that of, of fruit and all kinds of things, all kinds of ways to make money. They, they worked hard, and, and, and all summer long, at the end of summer, they had raised $70, if you will, all the change. So they took it to the bank, and they got them three twenties and a 10 so they just decided to split that money. The, 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 the Sunday came that they were making the offering. And so that as the offering uh, basket was coming around, the, the three little girls had $20 apiece, and the mom had the, the $10, and they took up that offering. They were so proud to put that money in there. You know, they were given to a, a poor family. And so then the offering was taken up. And so they, they were so happy and excited that they went to, went to you know, home and, and, and rejoicing. It wasn't too long in the afternoon that the preacher comes by, and he drops off an envelope. And in that envelope was three $20 bills and a $10 bill. And there was some other money there. And they realized that they were the poor family. And, you know, that discouraged them. Because they realized of their condition. They, they got focused on their problem. They got focused on something that, that really wasn't an issue before. And so then they, they got so focused on that problem that, that the happiness in that, that home went away. And, and the discouragement and the things that, that took place of that. And they didn't know what to do. You know, here they had, you know, the money, and it really didn't mean anything to them because the happiness was gone and so forth. And, and it was not too long that there was uh, a missionary that came. And that mom had kept that money in that, that envelope. And that missionary had came, and they had taken up a special offering. And, you know, they had been praying about what to do with that money because, you know, really they, they didn't feel like they needed the money. So they gave it to that missionary. And so that missionary, as they, they, they found out the collection and the amount that was in there, they had given a large per percentage of that, of that, of that offering. When they announced that this was the amount, and, and that missionary was so happy, and his, his comment was this, he said, you must be a rich church. And in their mind, they realized that, you know what, it's not in, in, in and they took their, their focus off of their problem and realized that it was, it was God who gave them those blessings. It was God who had done that. And it wasn't, it wasn't about the material things. It wasn't about the things that, that they could hold on to. It was the things that, that were eternal, the things that, that were priceless. And, it, and they brought them back to the things that were most important in their family. And they, and they focused not just on the problem, but the one that could solve their problem. You know, we sometimes get so focused on our situation and we get so sidetracked that we need to accept the situation for what it is. Ever, anybody ever heard that phrase, it is what it is? It is what it is? I say that a lot. I heard that a, a, a man said that one thing. It is what it is. I mean, it, unfortunately, you know, there's, I've been in a lot of situations, especially, uh, you know, where you broke down and you got something and it's like, you know, you get so frustrated. But you know what? The more frustrated I get, it ain't changing things. And, you know, I'm so, so I, you know, I, and, and sadly, you would think I would be smart enough to, to know better than this, right? Because I'm the one stands up here sometimes and gives, gives, you know, message that God said, sometimes I just, I get so frustrated and, and I just forget what, I forget about everything. And Michelle said, have you prayed about it? And I'm like, you know, it's about time to pray. And I look foolish, right? I should be the one saying, okay, guys, let's pray. But you know what? It, sometimes it's one of my little kids. But child of God, sometimes we get so focused on the problem. We get so frustrated with what's going on and, and we get so just discouraged. And the devil just laughs and he has a great time. He said, you know what? Man, look at that. Look at that. I got him right where I want him. And the devil does that to you and I. Discouragement comes. A problem comes. A situation comes in our life, and, and, and we focus on that, and we try to get it our mind off of it, but then the devil says, remember, remember that? Remember that problem over here? Remember that thing? that, And, and we're fighting against the odds, and the devil, the devil he just, man, he's having, a, he's having a good old time bringing up. Those are situations. Now do I find the, the situation? I've got to hurry. I've got to find the source. The source of our problem. You know, the source of our problem is sin and Satan. Sin and Satan. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted... 
when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. God cannot tempt with evil. You know, sometimes God may remove his hand of protection from our life. You know, his, his hedge of protection. You know, so uh, evil may come, but it's not because God has inflicted evil. It's because that, you know, he's, he's kind of stepped back. You know, sometimes it's, it's because not necessarily he may have stepped back, but we stepped away from God. And we're getting over here in left field or over here out of bounds, if you will, where, 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 where the devil is, is prevalent. We need to get back to center where God is. We need to get back closer to God because the further we get away from, from God, the more dangerous it is. It's like the sheep that, that has gone astray. And when we go out there and we get out in the world and we do things that, that absolutely just, you know, put us, ourselves in, 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 in severe uh, danger, but we need to consider the source of, of our problem and make sure that, that we uh, are not uh, focusing on that. You know, the devil is a liar. The devil is a deceiver, if you will. You know, in, in the book of John, in chapter 8, Jesus is speaking to uh, some people there, and he was talking about being the servant of sin. And, and I won't go there for sake of time because we're about out of time and, and so forth. But he talked about the devil. He said, You're of the father of the devil. The lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of lies. He's the father of lies. The devil will lie to you. Believe it or not, he'll lie to you. He'll tell you that, uh, you know what, everything's going to be all right over here. You go over here, or this, and, and he's going to tell you a lot of things that, that just, you know, really in, in our minds may make sense. He's going to tell you that it's better just, you know, to, rem, to just, since you had this problem and this situation in your past or this problem that you've got going on, it's better just to, just to go over here by yourself and, 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 you know, just take a little break, if you will. You know, just, you know, don't go to church on Sunday night or on Wednesday night. You know, don't worry about it. You know, just take a little bit of breather and, and it'll be all right. You know, the devil plants that in our mind. He, he, he lies to us. He deceives us. But I find a solution. But I find a solution. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above the able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. You know, our solution is our Savior. You know, there's always a solution to our problem, and it's in our Savior. It's in our Savior. Not only do I find the, the source of the problem, but I find the struggle, you know, sometimes in the midst of, of life, uh, the struggle we call life, if you will, uh, we lose sight of, of truth. We really do. We, we lose sight of truth. We, we survey, <clears throat> you know, when we look back in our past and, and we survey our walk with Christ, you know, I bet every one of us can tell stories about, you know, where we had a similar situation. We had this problem in our life and, and God delivered us from it. We had the situation in our life and God delivered us from it. But in between the situation coming and God's deliverance, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, a lot of baggage, if you will. We carry a lot of scars and a lot of things that, that, that we bring with us sometimes. And those are the things that happen in between God's deliverance and the problem occurring. Those, those things in between, those are the things that the devil wants us to focus on. Those are the things that he wants us to, to remember. And the devil somehow masks God's love. And, and he creates a, a feeling of absence in God's, and, you know, for us to feel like we're, you know, we're alone in this, we're, we're, we're on this on our own, right? You know, sometimes it feels like, you know, we're on our own and, and God has somehow, he's just not nowhere to be found. And, you know, sort of like Job, you know, Job was, it's like, we're, we're you know, we're, God, where are you? And, you know, when God finally spoke, he said, you know, Job, where were you at when I created the, the heaven and the earth? You know, we think about an amazing God and a powerful God that we serve. You know, if we're a child of God, God doesn't never leave us. God does never leave us. He said, I'll never leave you. He says, I'll be with you always. But the devil will mask God's love and gets our eyes off our Savior. And he gets our eyes on our struggle. Gets our eyes on our struggle. 
But it's an amazing struggle to battle, amazing what, what we bring with us, amazing what we package and, and, and just collect and, and we just carry around this baggage that you and I carry with us everywhere we go. Really, we do. These things, these, these things that we're battling against the odds, we just pick them up and we carry them around and we, we just remind ourselves of, of struggles and, and we carry so much uh, with us and it's, it's amazing. There's an array of things in our basket, if you will. Anybody shop at Aldi's? And I, anytime you go to the grocery store, you see people and they shop, pull, push your cart around. Of course, I push a cart around because, uh, anyway, obviously, we, it's obvious why we push carts around. But you look and see what people have in their baggage. You know, anybody ever do that? See what they're buying? Oh, come on, be honest. Okay, many people do. I do. I enjoy that. What, what's what that person buying? Well, I didn't picture that person as eating that kind of food. Anybody ever do that? You know, you are what you eat. Anybody see my basket? I've got a bunch of fruit. They must think I'm a fruity person, but... And I always get the question when you get to the cash register is, do you have a restaurant? Or, or are you a chef? Because you're buying so much of the same kind of stuff. But regardless, we carry all this, this, this stuff, these things that, that we pack in there, and, and things that tell a story about our lives, and things that tell, you know, about what we're going through and these situations. And, 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 and you know what we need to do with them? We need to put them right here on this altar. We need to bring them up here and say, you know, Lord, all this baggage I've been carrying around all these years, this, this problem, this situation that, that I'm battling against the odds, I'm, I'm going to give it to you because I'm tired of carrying it around. Because this, this weight that I've got on my shoulders, it's, it's just way too heavy for me, Lord. I'm going to give it to you. He says, come unto me, all ye that are, that are, labor, that are heavy laden. You know, I'll, I'll give you rest. He promises us rest, the struggle that we go through. Fourthly, I find the strategy, the, the strategy. And then uh, in the for sake of time, fifth, I find the strength. Uh, you know, in the, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, it says, Lest I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. We go to the Lord, and, and we, we tell the Lord about our problem and our situation. You know, that problem, that situation may not go away perfectly. It may still be there to a certain extent. But God has provided a way that you and I can bear it. He's provided a way. He's provided grace. As Paul said, my grace, as Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for thee. He realized that it was in his weakness that he was the strongest. Because it wasn't his strength, it was God's strength. Child of God, we have a strength in our Savior. Not only do I find the strength, but lastly I find the steadfastness. You know, once we realize that that problem, that odds, the, the thing that we're fighting against, going against that, that odd, that situation that, that if we was to really, we just want to lay down and quit and be done with it. But we fight against it. And we need to fight and fight and fight and continue to fight. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steadfast. You know, child of God, we need to be steadfast. We need to be faithful to God. We need to be fighting against the odds. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. I pray, Lord, that if there's someone here, Lord, fighting against the odds, one that's carrying around a lot of baggage, something, Lord, that's weighing on them, I pray that, Lord, they'd lay down that, that, that thing that's, Lord, it's just weighing them down, discouraging them and getting them beat down, Lord. I pray that they'd lay it on this old-fashioned altar tonight. We thank you and we praise you.